Lads, welcome back to another episode of This Week on So Rare. Game week 302, where I'm going to take you through the game week as a whole, my personal game week, what I won, what I didn't win, who were some of the best scorers of the game week, and what were the scores required to win the big prizes. Leave a like if you do enjoy the video, subscribe if you are new to the channel, and let's get straight into things. Okay, so from a personal perspective, my rewards that are set to be won for game week 302 are the following some ETH and a whole lot of nothing else. Weird game week, to be fair. I didn't get hardly any decisives through the 15 to 20 players that I normally play. Um, yeah, weird week, to be fair. We will obviously get into it all. Um, but as you can see here, my top player was a common card, scoring 76. So yeah, very low scoring week for me personally. I'm not sure how you experience your weeks uh, in terms of the players and, and how they scored. But yeah, for me, very weird week. Um, we kick it off with an all-star rare team, which weirdly enough, I thought going into the game week that Etienne Green wouldn't play. So I had my heart set on only having four outfield players for this team. Um, and to be fair, the four outfield players secured the first Ethereum threshold, which is all I won together. Like I didn't need the goalkeeper score to do that. As you can see, he only scored 34, which is an absolute farce because he ended up getting another red card. This was Etienne Green's first game back after receiving a red card three games ago or whatever it was. Yeah, I've seen the incident. I think it was harsh. If you've seen it, let me know in the comment section what you think. I don't really think he's touched him. I think it is a little bit harsh. Um, but regardless, he got sent off. Absolute nightmare as a holder. Yeah, 244 points. We just missed out on the second threshold. If he didn't get red carded, of course, we would have easily smashed it. Wesley Fofana on his debut for Chelsea with a 15 all-round score, conceding one goal against West Ham. You probably take it. Um, considering no clean sheet. Pedri only played 63 minutes. I'm guessing with Champions League in mind there. 11.3 AA. He created a few big chances, which was nice, uh, but no decisive for him. Fatty off the bench, minus 1.9 AA score. Nothing really happened for him in, in the 16 minutes that he was on the field. And Jens Odegaard actually scored a goal and got a 9 AA score, which was really, really pleasing. Away to Emmon in 71 minutes. So hopefully he gets the nod midweek as well for AZ in the conference league under 23 rare 232 points was pretty disappointing we knew lafont was in for a hard time against psg and yeah conceded three goals just not ideal under this new matrix sail young woo with a 41 they lost 2-0 away to one of the worst teams in the league which is really interesting um just another reason why i don't like trusting the k league and the j league boys um where possible but yeah i thought it was a really good matchup for him it wasn't to be. Daniel Lukin, Monday night. 16 AA score, which was really nice against Torpedo. They ended up winning the game 1-0. I think it was a penalty in like the 100th minute or something that was taken like three times. A couple of attempted assists. I think he had five shots, but none of them were on target. Uh, a couple of duels, one. No tackles, one. And fouled a few times. So yeah, not the best of AA scores, but definitely not the worst but no decisive, which really killed us. Enzo Fernandez with a 27 AA score in 67 minutes. Again, with Champions League in mind, I'm sure that is why he was brought off at that time. But they ended up winning the game in weird fashion. I think João Mario scored a penalty and again, like the 100th minute, but got red carded because he took his top off. But uh, yeah, take 27 AA score all day long from him in that time period. And Mika, 6.1 AA score, shot on target, a couple attempted assists. But no goals in that game for Met. So yeah, really poor scoring there from my under 23s. Under 23 rare pro is where my players scored the best in terms of, you know, I prioritize this lineup. So it's no shock really to me that this lineup scored the best, but it just wasn't enough for a reward. As you can see, 17 points away. Diego Costa with a 70-80. He did keep a clean sheet, uh, which was really, really nice to see. I watched the game. He played well. Uh, 13 AA score as well, which was really, really pleasing. Timber. With a 58, that is with a clean sheet as well. Again, not a crazy high-scoring game from Timbo, which I can't say I expected this. I expected a little bit more, and, and he did get a little bit more at one point, but he lost a load of duels. I think, yeah, he lost six duels, which you just can't afford to do if, if you want to score in the, in the 30s AA-wise, really. So, um, yeah, that was disappointing. He did get a shot on target. couple penalty area entrance. Um, but, yeah, 23 AA just isn't really going to cut it right now. Daniel Lukin, captain again. I went balls deep in Lukin this weekend in both my under-23 rare and my under-23 rare pro. Um, but yeah, it didn't really play off as planned. Florentino Luis, on the other hand, in 67 minutes, got himself a 35 AA score, which is kind of the silver lining for this game week. For me, it's a really, really encouraging score. 
Hopefully we can see more of this in the Champions League midweek. And then Zion Fleming on his second start for Millwall in a 2-0 win against my hometown club, Cardiff City. 12.8 AA score. I think he had like five or six shots in the game. One was on target and attempted assist. He did really well on his duels as well. Two net duels, one, and then was fouled two times as well. So yeah, a 12.8 AA score isn't bad at all. It isn't enough to win podiums unless there's a DA added onto that. Um, but he was close in, in doing so. Like I said, he had loads of shots, um, but just wasn't to be. But encouraging signs, I'm just glad he is starting again. He did come in as a top signing for Millwall. I think they paid like 1.8 or 1.9 mil for him, which is a record for them as a club. 365 points in 95th position. It's respectable, but just nowhere near enough. Like I said, 17 points away from a tier 2, 27 away from a tier 1. I'm basically one DA away from a decent card, which is of course frustrating, but we do live and learn. Under 23 Super Rare was a bit of a disaster um, on Saturday because Nico Williams went from hero to zero for me. He basically won a penalty for Nottingham Forest, but it was handball by the opposition player. And we know that that doesn't count as a penalty one, which I think is harsh, to be completely honest. That's another talking point for another day. But let me know in the comment section what you think of that. Do you think players should get given a penalty one if they've kicked the ball in the box and, and the opposition has handballed it. Let me know what you think. But yeah, 11.3 or minus 11.3 AA score. Conceded three goals. They lost 3-2 at home to Bournemouth. Nottingham Forest did. Yeah, just a really, really shocking result. I think they were 2-0 up as well, which is just ridiculous, really. Two tackles, one, one interception. Lost a load of duels, which is just not ideal. Lost the ball 24 times as well, which you kind of expect. Um, loads of penalty area entries as usual for him, but yeah, just a really, really poor day at the office. He was scoring pretty well at one point, but when the goal started flooding in for Bournemouth, it was just curtains for me. But on the other hand, Carlos Cuesta, 29 AA score isn't bad at all in a nil-nil. I'll take it. Obviously, the clean sheet is added on to that, so you're looking at like a 19 AA score without the clean sheet. Tanny actually surprised me. They actually beat Frontel 2-1, which is wild. His AA score wasn't great, though, so it kept me in it. You know, if, if my Super 8 goalie's scoring me a 50, it's decent, but I need the rest of the boys to really come up trumps, and, and they didn't, of course. But definitely happy with Quester's debut for the gallery. Zaydu Youssef away to Porto Manise. It was always going to be a tough game. 1.7 AA score. He started off pretty well, but a yellow card, a couple of fouls. He won three tackles, to be fair to him. Obviously conceded a goal. Just too many duels lost, really, um, in the grand scheme of things. No real attacking output because Porto Manis are a good side, and I didn't really expect much from Famalicão, uh, to be completely honest. But, you know, I was hoping for like a 10, 15 AA score. But, you know, it wasn't to be. Kudku was on the bench in a 0-0 draw at home, which was annoying. I thought it was a good fixture for him. Obviously, only got seven minutes in the game, got a 2.3 AA score. It's just nowhere near enough. 129 points away from a tier three. Disappointing, to be completely honest, but when your captain scores you 34, it's just curtains, isn't it? Let's, let's be completely honest about it. Underdog super rare. Koga actually got a respectable score for once in a two-all draw away from home, 13.68. You take it. Um, Sforza with an okay score as well, 12.8 AA score in a 1-0 win. Um, Yairi Sharon did DMP. I think he had a stomach bug over the weekend, along with a couple other Anderlecht players. And Jean Mario started on the bench, I think... It was something to do with them losing 3-1 last game and he got dragged, I think, at halftime. So I think he was in the bad books of the manager um, in this last game. But yeah, got seven minutes, got 5.3 AA score, which is nice. Whether that means he starts midweek in the Champions League against Atletico, who knows? Hopefully he does. Um, but yeah, overall, pretty disappointing week, to be honest. Like, not enough decisives across the board. And for the most part, my goalkeepers, Lafont and and Tanny not keeping clean sheets just completely kill you, don't they, really? Um, and yeah, Nico Williams is my captain. Didn't really do the business for me. But scores on the whole just nowhere near high enough for me to really compete. Okay, so taking a look at some of the best scoring players for game week 302, it probably doesn't come as a shock to see Messi up there. Two assists and 100 for him. Florian Kind, wow, that is a throwback. Anyone watching this that played Football Index will know a little bit about Florian Kind's. He was actually really good on Football Index, to be fair. And it, and it looks like he's replicating some of his old form, to be fair. 100, one goal, two assists, which is huge. Josh Madger with three goals. Wow, and 100. That's really, really big. Uh, who else we got here? Slanina with 100. That is insane. That is ridiculous. Walker Zimmerman with a goal, 100. I think the Nashville boys went crazy over the weekend, didn't they, to be fair? Tony Latto for Valencia. Uh, Daniel Lovitz for Nashville as well with a 99.3. There's actually not that many hundreds this weekend, lads. I think it was a, 
definitely a, a lower scoring week as a whole. And you could probably see that with the lack of 100s we're seeing here, like no more than 1500s over the whole game week, which is interesting. I'm sure there's maybe some correlation between, you know, teams having Champions League and, and midweek games and, and them scoring poorly on the weekend. I don't know that for a fact, but that is just a theory that I do have. Lenglet with a 98.9. Lorenzo Insigne with two goals and a 98.5. Douglas Santos with a 98.5. So some of the big guns definitely continue to score pretty well. Nuno Mendes with a 96. I think that was off the bench as well. Kieran Trippier with a 96 with no decisive. That is huge. Um, Steven Bergwijn, two goals, 95.9. Tolo for Seattle, 94.9 with a goal and an assist from defence. That is massive. Hani Mukhtar, two goals. Of course he did. Yunus Musa is looking amazing for Valencia. Ever since Carlos Soler's left for PSG, this guy's just really, really taking it to a new level over the last few games. A 93.8, albeit two assists, but he's been doing really, really well recently. Enzo Lafie with a 93. Pedro Goncalves, of course, he gets two assists. Leandro Trossard, goal and a penalty one. I don't know if you've seen the clip of the penalty one, um, but yeah, he like nutmegs. Who is it? I think it's Wilfred Ndidi for Leicester. Made him look like a right tool. And yeah, got a penalty one there. Kirkus for AZ was on absolute smoke. 18-year-old, 92.6, no decisive. I think they did get a clean sheet mind. Anton Moranchuk with a goal and a 92. Kenny Tete with a 92 for Fulham. Jesus. Okay, who else do we have? Of course, we have Marioka, one goal, 91.9. Jürgen Elkingkamp with a goal and a penalty one. That is somebody I've got my eye on right now, to be fair, in that Antwerp team. They're looking really, really good. Two are many, a 90 with no decisives is huge. A Barda, two goals, 91 against Rangers. That was massive for them. Mateus Nunes with an 89 for Wolves and an assist. Really big. Uh, Dividev with an 89. Oh, I missed that over the weekend. Uh, Canales with an 89. Nicolas de la Cruz with an 88. Um, Rafael Liao, two goals, one assist. 88.7 there. Pepe with an 88, no decisive. A lot of the players that we normally see up here are still up here, but for whatever reason, not many players actually scored 100 this weekend. Let's have a look at some of the actual results in terms of teams over this past weekend. So first of all, we'll look at Friday's games and see if there's anything that stands out. Dynamo Zagreb won 3-1 at home. Probably not much of a shock there. Fortuna Sittard 3, Utrecht 4. Wow, that must have been a hell of a game. Bastos with a goal and an assist. Silla with an assist with an 88. That's big. Duvikas with 100 off the bench? That's nuts. In 27 minutes. That is wild. Fair play. That is ridiculous. Benfica with a 2-1 win at home. Dortmund with a 1-0 win against Hoffenheim at home. Uh, Mets 0-0, which killed us there. West Brom, Burnley 1-all. Celta Vigo 3-0, I think... Didn't, yeah, Jorgen Larsson off the bench with an assist in 45 minutes on his debut, which is a really, really nice sign. Oscar Rodriguez is also a football index wonder kid that has a place in my heart always. Nice goal and a 76.9 for him that game week. Um, not much else there. Sporting one away. On Saturday, what do we see? Antlers with a 2 all. Hiroshima 2 0 against Shimzu. Probably not much of a shock there. Uh, Shonen was probably a shock, beating Frontel 2-1, to be fair. Celtic beating Rangers 4-0 is probably not a shock, um, but yeah, great result for them. Everton 0-0, no goals there for Liverpool. Actually over the moon to see Jack De Vries starting for Venezia in the Serie B. That is somebody that I've held for so long, had a lot of stick for doing so. Finally, it's paying off. Union Berlin 1-0 with Bayern Munich, probably a bit of a shock, but, but Union have been great, to be fair, especially at home as well. They're definitely no mugs. And Bayern Munich obviously struggled there. Uh, Leverkusen losing 3-2 to Freiburg. Might be a bit of a shock. Brentford 5-2. Probably a bit of a shock. Bournemouth beating Forest was... I definitely didn't expect that, to be honest. Chelsea 2-1. Millwall 2-0. Um, Tottenham beating Fulham, probably not much of a shock. Mitrovic's goal was ridiculous, though. Millwall 0-0. Nil -nil. I'm actually really happy to see Callum Slattery's all-round score here. Um, he had a triple-double, which is nice. Two tackles, one. Two interceptions and three net duels won. That's actually a really encouraging sign, to be honest. I've got two of his super rares at the end of last season. So I'm hoping that those AA scores, plus some DAs, we could be looking at a bit of a player there. Real Madrid 2-1, Ajax 4-0, Salzburg 2-0. 
Krasnodar 2-1, nothing crazy. AC Milan won the derby. The Man City won all to Villa, actually was a, a bit of a shock, I'd say. Frankfurt 4-0 against Leipzig is ridiculous. Lyon 5-0. Feyenoord 4-3 against Go Ahead. PSG probably not much of a shock there. Barcelona 3-0 away to Sevilla. Sevilla have been poor actually recently. FC Dallas, I didn't play my Jesus Ferreira this weekend and of course he scores. Um, in a 3-0 away win. And then on Sunday, what did we see? New York Red Bulls lost 2-0 to Philly. Probably not much of a shock there. Cincinnati 2-0. I'll give them credit. Cincinnati have really turned around their season um, because they were shocking at the start of the season and, and last season as well. Nashville 3-0 against Austin is a very big result. All San losing 2-0 like we mentioned. Leo winning 3-1 against Montpellier. Probably not much of a shock. Anderlecht 2-0, which was probably not expected, I guess. Um, but definitely had a few players out. AZ winning 3-0 away. Brighton 5-2 against Leicester was a bit of a wild result. Antwerp 3-0. They are flying right now, to be fair to them. Um, anything else here? Gladbach losing to Mines. United beating Arsenal. Big, big result. Nice to see the boy Anthony on his debut get a goal and a 10.5 AA score. It doesn't look like he's died yet. I think he'll do well in that Man United team, to be honest. Um, he's come at a time with his... Lots of positivity around the club after a shocking start of the season. So, yeah, hopefully he can really, really kick on and, and get some nice DAs and, and AA scores for them. And Villarreal 4-0 against Elche. Nothing crazy. Zenit beating Spartak 2-1 away. I think they were 1-0 down. I didn't play my Paddy Ashiel this weekend, which is frustrating. Um, and he scored very well, 37.56 in a 1-0 away win to Nice. Um, very annoyed that I didn't play him there. Valencia 5-1 against Getafe. I guess there's nothing crazy, but definitely a lot of goals scored there. And Timbers beat Atlanta 2-1. Atlanta are just a very, very poor team this year, got to be honest. And then yesterday, which was Monday, we seen some overnight MLS games. DC United 0-0 against Colorado. River Plate winning 2-0. LA 2 all. Chicharito missing the Penenka penalty in the 90-whatever minute for his hat-trick. Um, saved by John Paul's camp. New England Revolution 3-0 and it's probably going to be a shock for you to see that Carlos Heel did not get any decisives and also keep an eye out for this boy, Noel Buck. He scored a really, really good goal. Um, I'm not sure how many cards there are on so rare, but he's definitely one to look out for. And then what else do we see? Seattle beat Houston 2-1, uh, San Jose Earthquakes 2-0. LA beating Salt Lake 2-0. Pablo Ruiz with a good AA score, to be honest, considering they lost 2-0. And then there's the Daniel Lutkin score, 16.4 in a 1-0 away win. Etienne Green with another sending off in the 63rd minute. You just cannot write that one. And last but not least, we're going to finish on looking at some of the rankings, some of the scores that were required to win in game week 302. So, All-Star Limited... We've got a Nashville FC stack at the top. That is super impressive. 462 points. It just shows you don't need the big names to win on Sore. You know, we, we always see moaning on Twitter, you know, of the stacks and, you know, the PSG stacks, the Bayern stacks, Liverpool stacks. But the Nashville FC stack is the one to look out for this game week. Joe Willis in goals, Walker Zimmerman, Daniel Lovitz, Hani Mukhtar and CJ Sapong. Very, very big result there. Um, in second, we've got Ruli Penda again with a goal. Douglas Santos smashing as a captain. Pavard and Morioka. It's a very, very nice team. Pretty meta, but a very, very nice team nonetheless. You know, scores aren't as crazy as they have been, I guess. They're still very high, but nowhere near as high as we've seen over the last couple of weeks. Um, what about All-Star Rare? What was the scores there? Oh, there we go. 473 points for the winner. Yeah, that's big. Daniel Schmidt in goals with 79. That's huge. Wesley Howitt for Anderlecht with a nice 84 there. Morioka, Hani Mukhtar and Hulk. Uh, Hani Mukhtar, man, just scores every game. I've actually been lucky enough to watch him live a few times. He's a very, very good player. He's way too good for the MLS, I think. I'm not sure at what level he could play at in Europe and be effective, but he's definitely, definitely too OP for the MLS. Um, but yeah, some big scores again in, in All-Star Rare. What about All-Star Rare Pro? And our boy is at the top, McBrideAce.eth, who's been on the channel before many a time. Sexy Sergi FC. What a score that is. 502 with a Carlos Heel blank that is as well. Messi captain, Hani Mukhtar, 
Walker Zimmerman supers and then Joe Willis. Wow, that is an unbelievable team. I hope you get a great card for winning that McBride. That is an absolutely monster score. Three. Let's have a look at under 23 limited and how crazy the scores were there. Oh, that's a big, big result. That is 479 points, 24 points away from second. That is a massive score. Sonina, 107 from your goalkeeper is just very much welcomed. De Ligt with an 88 as captain. Enzo Lafi with a 99. Raphael Liao with a 99 and Jonathan David with, with an 84.9. That is a massive, massive team and a huge score. Uh, Sonina again here. Yeah, that 100 from Sonina absolutely sorted a load of users, to be fair. Simply Alex in ninth, that is massive. Kunde, Gusto, Diego Costa, Tuameni and Vinicius Jr. There were about under 23 rare. Were they as big here? No, they weren't. 429 points. Diego Costa, De Ligt, to a many, Vinny Jr. and Rafael Liao. Wow, still a very, very nice team. But pipped it by like six or seven points there, which is big. Um, Valverde off the bench, I think it was. I don't think he even started there. Okay, under 23 rare pro, 458 points. It's a very healthy lead, that is. Van der Voort, Andreu, Yunus Musa, super rare. Slamansky, captain, and Jonathan David, super rare. Yeah, that's big. Zachary in third. Congratulations, Zach. Yeah, some big scores. Nothing crazy, but definitely some nice scores all around. From a personal perspective, my players definitely didn't score as high as they sort of usually do or, or get decisives as much as they usually do. But there definitely were players that scored pretty nicely this weekend. And if you could manage to get them all into one little team, then, then there was definitely scope to win prizes for sure. Okay, I hope you did enjoy the video, guys. If you did, please do leave it a like. And if you are completely new to SoRare and, and you haven't yet signed up, there's a link in the description of this video that will get you one free limited card once you've purchased five from the new card auctions on SoRare. Hope you have a great day, hope you have a great game week, and I shall see you guys in the next video.